Alright, so welcome to the lab workshop guys. We're going to be doing a tutorial today on uh, gradient map baking onto your model. Uh, we're going to be using this uh, Gorilla Summon model from uh, Nature's Prophet in Dota 2. Uh, and uh, the reason we want this nice gradient baked, to, baked into our model is so that um, we're able to uh, make the model fit a little bit better and mesh a little bit better with the environment. Since the game view is from uh, up here, uh, having a gradient that starts from the head to the legs is uh, it's very helpful. It's a nice little trick that helps the model just fit into the environment and gets grounded way better uh, in game. So this is a bake that I did earlier today, and I'm gonna go through uh, step by step and show you guys how to how to achieve this. And then using this uh, texture map, we're actually combine it with some ambient occlusion, a little bit of texturing, and we're gonna get even better results for our final model, or for our, uh, at least for the beginning of our texturing. Uh, for the color map. So, um, okay, let's go right ahead and uh, we're gonna be using Maya, um, even though I'm showing uh, Soft Image right now. So, here is Maya, and what I did is I just grabbed the section that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be exporting this guy as an OBJ and bring it into Maya. If you're using Maya, then you know, you need to ignore this part. And uh, this side is mirrored, so we don't worry about that guy. So, this is the only guy that I'm gonna import into Maya to start baking that, uh, that gradient map. Okay, so uh, here it is, already set up in Maya, imported. And I'm gonna show you guys the plugin that I used for the gradient map. And uh, it's a plugin, it's a mail script actually, created by, by this guy's here. So um, I'm gonna put that into the chat, I guess. And. Uh, uh, I'll also have this posted on the on the video that'll be in the broadcast archive for liveworkshop.com and you'll have all the links there to go to and download the uh, the mail script is right here so um, yeah so follow that link that will be on the on the video if you're watching this uh, from the recording and not live and it's at costas.se and uh, and go into the his uh, scripts. And uh, what it's called is called the uh, Quota Create Rep Map. Mail script. So once you download that, it's a RAR file. Um, I'll show you guys where to put it. We're gonna go into uh, your user's, well, whatever your user's name is, Documents Maya 2013 or whatever version of Maya you have, Preference and Scripts. Okay. Once you're in there, you just uh, grab the mail, the mail script that you downloaded from that RAR file. And once you have it in there, you jump back over to uh, your Maya scene. And we're going to open our script editor. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and clear this. And we're going to go load, load script. And go to that location where we saved the script. It'll be under your users, your username, documents, Maya 2000, whatever your version of Maya is, preferences, and scripts. And then we just load that sucker right there. It's the Kodi create rent map uh, ML. Okay, so there it is loaded at the bottom there. And then we can, we're going to execute the script. Uh, so you can either do control E to execute it, or you can go up here to your command and execute. All right, so that's executing the script, and it's uh, it's launched it into Maya, so that should be working now. Uh, so now that we have that there, um, we can actually... Another way to do that... is... Once it's launched in there, I'm going to show you guys how to throw it on your shelf. So that you can just uh, do it really quick, really quickly next time instead of loading the script manually. So you go ahead and you're gonna copy this uh, Kodi create ramp map text, and we're gonna paste that into our mail uh, command line down here. And then we're gonna highlight that, and we're gonna middle mouse, click and drag onto uh, whatever shelf you wanna put it at. We're going to drag it up there and uh, we're going to save it as a mill. Okay, so now it's right there, see it? So now all we need to do, we can close the script editor now, is uh, select your model and we just click that button. And it's going to run the, the script just like that. Um, so now 
here's the, the gradient. It's gonna ask you which direction you wanna have the gradient map go. If you want it from front to back, from uh, top to bottom, or from uh, the C direction, which is, uh, or, uh, sorry, the X would be left to right, and then C would be from, uh, from uh, uh, front to back. So we I want obviously the, the wide direction because that's uh, that's up and down and that's what we want. We want the dark bottom and the bright top. So we tell it on the Y and then there you go. It says that our ramps are set up for us to start uh, messing around with them, adding color and all these other options that I'll go with in a minute. So it tells you that you have to run the script again so that it actually starts uh, baking the texture for you and throws it into a folder. Uh, so we say okay, but before we do that, we're actually gonna edit it. So I'm gonna show you guys, these planes here are what control your gradients and how far uh, you want to put them from your model. So let's see, we can start, we can just select them and translate them up or down. Don't go down because then you'll end up with some nasty, <laughs> nasty stuff. So make sure that your model fits within both of them, your top and bottom. Okay, and don't worry about these little artifacts that appear on the screen or on your model. That's just Maya. The texture itself will actually be clean of all these little uh, low polygon uh, errors that just the, the viewport has. So ignore those. Just just worry about the gradient. All right. So make sure that everything's uh, about where you want it. You know, if it's getting too bright at the top, you can always just pull it up. So it's a little bit softer. Same with the darkness if you want. Or you can go to uh, your shelves over here and go to your ramp bake ramp. An interesting name. And you can actually just change the colors in here as well. Pull them across. And you can also. Uh, oh, frick. So that's to delete. <laughs> if you want to add another one, just click inside it, and there it is. And move it up and down. And then you can change your selected color to whatever. So uh, a good trick, like you can do, you can start it from here, or you can just do it in Photoshop, is to um, add colors to the map so that when you use multiply or whatever filter you use in Photoshop to apply it to your model on top of your color map, uh, you end up with uh, already kind of like a nice, a nice shadow color. You know, I, I never like to use black colors for uh, for your shadows in any texture. I always add a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple, you know, depending on the, what the main environment is going to be. You want to add a tiny bit of color and it looks, it ends up looking way better, guys. So in, you can do it in here, it's an option. So you can just uh, select the bottom color there and, you know, make it a little bit, maybe a purple, maybe a little bit more into the blue. Something like that. And then you want to maybe change the, don't keep the top as white. So uh, use a multiply on it. It's just gonna do the bottom, so always add a little bit to the brightness as well. And then you can always mess around with the levels to contrast it out more if you want. This is an example, I mean, uh, the, the test I did, I actually did black and white, and then I added the colors in Photoshop, but this is just so you guys know how to use the, the plugin um, uh, fully. Okay, so say we have that all set up, and then we're supposed to run the the bake uh, or the script again so that it'll save the actual uh, actual texture into our folders so you can uh, again retype this into the console or you can just hit this this uh, handy little uh, button that we created we're gonna hit that again and it's gonna bake the texture out for us it'll just take like a few seconds okay so then it tells you that it saved it on your users, uh, username, documents, Maya, projects, default, and right map, whatever. It's a lie, <laughs> at least for my, uh, in, in my folders. It's, it doesn't save it in that location. It actually saves it um, here. It saves it under your users, username, documents, Maya, projects, default, rendered data, mental ray, and then light map. So um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play, paste this into the description of the, um, uh, of the video as well later on so you guys have that exact location and what I did actually is I saved this as a shortcut on my desktop so that I can always access that folder right away instead of having to search for it all the time so yeah save that as a shortcut and save yourself some, some, save yourself some time and we'll go ahead and uh, show you guys what the texture map looks like now uh, so it should be uh, this guy right here here it is so it's got all those colors that we just baked right into it. And see, it doesn't have any of those artifacts that we spoke about. It's really nice and clean. 
So uh, before we actually throw this on a model, I'll show you guys another trick to uh, keep in mind for uh, models if you're doing them for Dota. Um, let's see. Okay, this is save that right on. Okay, so sometimes you don't want the gradient to go straight from the ground, you know, directly all the way to the very tip of the model. Uh, maybe your model has a big front like this uh, tree and gorilla has. So maybe we want the, the angle of the light to go across from head to back legs. Because that'll give us a nicer little, you know, more depth. Since that's like the actual um, viewpoint of interest for, uh, for the model. So we're gonna do the, the, le uh, the bake of the ramp starting from the head to the toe instead of from the tip to the very center of the bottom. And uh, the actual ramp planes that show up with this uh, plugin, they don't actually. You can't actually rotate them, and they will. They'll work because it's just, it's it's scripted and coded in uh, already to just be up and down or back or front or left to right. So what you're actually gonna do is select your model and just rotate it. We're gonna trick the the script into uh, doing this position for us. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Just do that. Hit your shelf script button again, tell it to go in the Y direction, and there it is. And that's that's pretty much it, you know, it's pretty straightforward, you know. So once uh, once you bake that, uh, you'll end up with uh, this map, which I already had prepared, which is more, you know, more front roll on the face, and then going along the back, and then ending on the back toes. Because uh, that's that's a, a bit um, more interesting uh, gradient for for this particular model. So test that out if you want. It's really useful. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys what the actual results of, uh, you can achieve with uh, this ramp mask uh, uh, onto an actual model. Uh, so here is the bake that is more geared from the head to the toe or the back legs, like we said. It'll help us, help us ground the model into the environment way nicer in Dota because of the game view angle. And it'll uh, put more attention on the top part, which is the most important part uh, for this model inside Dota. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you guys all uh, the other steps that uh, you can go through and create some really cool stuff with it. So here's our starting model with uh, no rat mask. And here's our bake wrap mask attached to it and then I added some quick splash of color to the map not to the ramp itself but just just to the model and then the ramp is just multiplied on top of this one so you see we have the gradient map uh, baked and then just a color map on it really basic colors and I left it I guess the eyes are still in there they're more textured but just ignore the eyes for now um, okay so then the next step I did for this guy is uh, I actually added colors to the ramp so I'll go really quickly uh, over how I did that. So we're going to duplicate this layer just to show you guys. And I'm going to do a color balance in Photoshop. And that, I use uh, shortcuts, but let me show you guys where that's at. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't even remember. Okay, here's not that color. Oh, it's been a while since I used the <laughs> menus. Okay, so here we go. It's in your adjustments and uh, color balance. Okay, so what you want to do in here, if you want, is uh, go into your sh select your shadows and add a little bit of color to those shadows. So we'll just go ahead and add a little bit of green, any bit of teal in there maybe, and then in your midtones, a little bit more yellow and more green. So we're not adding just one color to the gradient. We're adding about you know like three slight slightly similar colors to the gradient so that we we get a little more interesting colors going across from dark to brightness not just uh, like a blue you know that I mentioned before so that's depending on what model you're using too like this is gonna be a, a tree and so I, I decided to use a dark green going into a yellow going into a reddish you know warmer color to the top and that the top part won't show up as much so we're more interested into the mid, mid tones and the dark tones for this map because it's gonna be a multiply Okay, so then we go to the highlights, very top, and we add a bit more red. We have a bit more yellow, a bit more green in the midtones. Okay, so see, that's a pretty, pretty good gradient. Uh, and make sure you guys um, 
experiment, you know, as much as you can. Don't go off exactly by the settings. It's it's really dependent on your model and uh, the, the the effect you want to get and the colors you're going to be using on your on your characters. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and do a multiply on this guy onto our color. Let me hide all my other uh, color information in here so you guys don't see all that other stuff. Okay, so here's here's my color map that I had to begin with, and here's our our gradient, and we're going to do a multiply overlay on that and we're gonna turn down to about 58 percent or so so that wouldn't get we don't get too dark on the on the darker starks okay so that's that's the effect that it gives us really nice uh, the next step to go from here you know if you already did your high poly and your low poly uh, is to have your ambient occlusion baked for your model and here is our AO baked and applied to our model uh, combined with our gradient combined with our color and combined with our color that we did on our gradient so you can start to see a nice little effect you know that back end of him is getting grounded more into the scene or it will but I mean, you can see the gradient here starting to do a really, a really nice effect in combination with the ambient occlusion. Really nice. So here it is with our ambient occlusion and uh, in Photoshop, so you can see it. So here's with our grad, and here's without our grad. Okay. And then uh, where you go from there is up to you guys. That's when you start. Oops. Uh, that's when you start actually adding in details and start to actually texture and paint onto your model into uh, the actual color yourself. And uh, this is the where I just started. You know, uh, not too long ago. Uh, but here you can start seeing some little highlights that I started, some uh, gradation and colors, and the combination of those greens in the darkness going towards a lighter yellow and green towards the top, which is going to be more of a, a really light bark. It's going to do a really good combination for your models, guys. So yeah, that's, uh, that's baking your uh, gradient map in a nutshell, guys. So this has been a tutorial for the live workshop. Hopefully it'll help you, help you improve your models, quality of your models, and little tricks for you guys. Uh, and uh, make sure you guys visit liveworkshop.com and check out all our past broadcasts our featured game items and our tutorials like this one that will be on here pretty soon you can also if you have any questions or you want to show us your work or you need a critique on your model or some advice uh, head over to our forums guys and post your work in progress and the, me and other great artists uh, visit here and help each other out and help each other make our models better all right so thanks for watching this tutorial guys and we'll see you next time